On January 2nd, 2013, I got my first Fitbit. And like so many others, I set as my very first goal, reaching 10,000 steps. And I quickly discovered just how hard that was. And so I went online and I did some research. How do you get more steps? How do you reach 10,000 steps every day? Found a bunch of articles, a bunch of lists with recommendations, with ideas to walk more, to reach that 10,000 steps. And almost every one of those articles, almost every one of those lists included the idea of parking in the back of the parking lot. I'm near the Myrtle Beach International Airport. I have no idea where that plane's going. <laughs> and so I began parking in the back of the lot and quickly discovered something else. Pro tip, you don't get as many steps as you think. In fact, we're going to do an experiment in real time. I am at a mall near where I live. This is a big parking lot. And we're going to see just how many steps I get from the back of the lot to the front door of the mall. Let's go. By the way, if you are new to this channel, I'm Dave. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a licensed personal trainer. This video is not meant to be specific medical advice or exercise advice for you. I'm simply a guy who loves walking. I'm passionate about walking. I want to mo motivate others to walk as much as possible. I started a podcast, Walking is Fitness. It's a daily podcast, 10 minutes. And I invite you to check that out and begin walking every day to build a fitness habit, which over time becomes fitness momentum and then on to fitness transformation. So I'm at a mall near where I live. It is early in the morning. The mall is not open. It is a big parking lot. I realized that if I did this after the mall opened and I'm focused on talking with you and there are cars going by, that's not a really good combination. I didn't want to be a headline tomorrow. So this is pre-mall opening. Recently, I was listening to a podcast with the guest, Dr. Shane O'Mara. He's a neuroscientist in Ireland. He's become quite an expert on walking, on the benefits of walking. He's written a couple of books, in fact. And in that conversation, Dr. O'Mara said something that got me thinking. He said, we've engineered walking out of everyday life. And I got to thinking about that and realized that when I was a boy, I walked to school every day. When you needed to buy something at the grocery store or the store, you walked through the store. Even watching TV, if you wanted to watch something different, you had to get up, walk across the room, change the channel, and sit back down. Well, nowadays, if you don't want to walk, you don't have to. You can use the drive through you can use home delivery. There are remotes for everything. And taking the steps, nah. Take the elevator or the escalator. And so in 2013, I began parking in the back of the parking lot and realized I'm gonna need to do more than simply park in the very back if I wanna reach 10,000 steps. And I began looking at my day and looking at other ways that I can move more and sit less. Now, true, there are some benefits to parking in the back of the lot. I did get more steps. Very few people want to park in the back of the lot, so there's always empty spaces back there. And of course, I burned a few more calories parking in the back of the lot. But the real benefit of parking in the back of the lot wasn't reaching 10,000 steps. It was that I began engineering walking back into my life. I created over time a mindset of movement so that fitness, walking for fitness, wasn't just something I did for 30 minutes a day or maybe even 60 minutes a day, check that box off and I'm done. It became something I was doing throughout the day. And it started with that idea of parking in the back of the lot. All right, I'm now at the entrance 
to the mall. Let's check how many steps. All right, I got to do some math here. 310 steps. And again, I parked way, way, can, can I even see my car? It's like over there somewhere. I don't even see it. That's how far away it is. <laughs> the real value of parking in the back of the lot is that it re-engineered my mindset. Instead of looking for ways to avoid movement, to avoid walking, I was looking for ways to move more, to walk more. And sure, part of that was to get more steps, to reach that goal that I had, but that's been more than 11 years now. And I still park in the back of a lot. Not every time. There are times when parking in the back of a lot is not, is not appropriate. Sometimes it's not safe. Sometimes you're in a hurry, I'm in a hurry, and there's a parking space up close and I need to get in, get my thing, get back in the car and, and head home or to my next destination. But when it's appropriate and I've got the time, I'm aiming for the back of the lot. Always spaces back there. <laughs> I'm one of the few people who are parking in the back of the lot, burning a few more calories, getting a few more steps. But the real benefit, the parking in the back of the lot, is I re-engineered movement back into my life, walking back into my life, which created really a lifestyle of fitness. If you've been thinking about beginning a brand new fitness journey, you want to engineer exercise into your life, walking is a powerful way to begin. Don't, by the way, start with 10,000 steps. I've got another video that talks about why 10,000 steps is a terrible goal to begin. Instead, start small because the first goal is to build a habit. And I want to invite you to check out my podcast, Walking is Fitness. Every day, we can take a 10-minute walk together as you build a brand new fitness habit that over time becomes fitness momentum, and then you're on to fitness transformation. Check it out, Walking is Fitness, brand new episode every day. And by the way, I'm not in a studio talking about walking, talking about how much you should be walking. Every episode is recorded while I'm out walking too. So we're walking together. Check it out, and thanks for watching.